A lot of you probably know Drew as a photographer, but he's uh, started another little business here, and uh, these are really cool. So I'm excited to learn more about them, but um, he's going to present to us about Union 183. Okay? Go for it. All right, it's nice to see all of you this morning. How's everybody feeling semi-early on a Wednesday? Yeah, it is Wednesday, right? Yeah, okay. So I, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how this idea came to be first. We'll watch a little video, and then we'll talk a little bit more in depth about the business itself. So early 2020, I was over at Bearded Lady Coffee Roasters, and Larry Warren, walked in. Do all of you know Larry Warren? Nope. You should get to know him, he's a good I guy. Don't. So, he walked in and was kind of looking lost, and I was like, Larry, the music's too loud in here. Go home, what are you doing? And he was like, well, I'm looking for a gift for my son, who's married to a surgical specialist in New York, and they could buy all the yachts they want. What do you get a kid like that? So it turns out that his son went to school with Adam, who's the coffee roaster at Beard Lake. So he thought, I can get a gift for my son from Adam and get a handmade coffee mug that he can't get anywhere else. We'll box it up and send it to him for his birthday. And I thought, it's a great idea. And I thought, I should, uh, as I was waiting in line to get my coffee, I thought, I could create a box like that. Or Adam should create a box <coughs> like that. was actually my first thought, don't tell him. Um, <laughs> that's full of locally made goods for people to give as gifts that kind of tell the story of Joplin the entrepreneurs here, the passionate people that are going out and doing creative things, probably in their garage at night after their kids go to bed because it's something they love to do. And through 2020 and into early 2021, I was kind of kicking the rough edges off of this idea and what it could look like. And it evolved from uh, cardboard boxes and locally made coffee and different things, though we do use locally made coffee, into something a little more high-end, a little more customizable. So I'm gonna start this going around really quick. And they're pretty heavy duty, so don't be rough, but you don't have to be gentle with them either. But these are the boxes that we decided to transition to because they made more of an impact than something that's delivered to the hard <coughs> So in this box specifically, when you look at it, there's a little cradle in there that's meant to hold this regionally distilled whiskey so we were like, what is that? to keep it from rolling around in there. Uh, and you can pull the little cork out of it, the little plug out. That's what holds it in place and everything. Um, so if we want to get that video ready really quick, we'll show that. And then after that video is done, I'll kind of move into the next bit of my ramble here. Hold on just one second, actually. So this video is created by my business partner, who's also a videographer. And what, what you're seeing here is a few of the artisans that we work with. And the idea is that we can tell their story effectively through the giving of a gift box as people see and understand who they are and what their passions are. But we'll talk a little more about that after the video. So that's a little bit of a teaser about some of the artisans that we work with. So with that being said, I'm gonna also pass around some of this other stuff. 
We have to get it back. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with it. I have like 250 sitting around. So uh, if you do open it, you save some for me though. Okay. That'll start. So I'm going to start off with a name here, Union 183. My business partner and I were sitting around thinking about names. There were all sorts of different directions we thought about going with this, but given the idea that we wanted to go with connecting artisans together with people that needed great gifts, we decided that union was a great way to go. We're not an actual union. Um, but union referring to unity, and the number 183 being, we thought we want to be able to empower these artisans to be able to take days off because of this extra work they're doing in their garage, in their basements later on, after they put their kids to bed, turn on the light when it's dark out. So we want them to be able to take 183 days of vacation a year aside from weekends because we're able to source from them so many of their handmade goods that they have and empower people to give great gifts. So Union 183 is all about empowering artisans and helping people attain their goals. We also thought of three different whys. When it comes to why would you want to spend money on a really great gift? Um, our first one that we like to talk about is it's 100% unique. Our artisans that are creating things for us, they have a template that's based on price and size because each box is very specific, so it's kind of like Tetris, depending on what you choose to get in there. So every box that's made will, will be the same size as another box, but no two will look the same, um, other than the general designs of the lids and things, which can be used as cutting boards or charcuterie boards or anything like that as well. Um, so each of them is 100% unique. Uh, same thing with the coasters, the pins. Our Box maker is, his name is uh, Jeremy Higdon, and I met him years ago. And when I first had this idea, I talked to him, he was very excited about coming on board. How many of you know Steve Dorr? I saw that hand. Um, so Steve Dorr is our pin maker, and he has used wood from the old Joplin High School, from some of the trees around there, um, as well as some exotic woods. That little pin that's going around is one of my favorites because it's really heavy. So if you get your hands on it, let it sit in the crook of your hand and feel how it just has some great weight to it. It's a beautiful little pin. So to feed back into 100% unique, everything that we do have is handmade. Uh, we decided, we kind of agonized over the idea of what should we put in here? How far can we go as far as we don't want anything to be useless. We don't want anybody to look at this and say, I like this and this, but this not so much, so I'm gonna to toss it. So we really, really scrutinize anything that we end up putting in this box because we want it to be 100% not wasted, um, as well as being 100% unique. And when we first started, we originally packed the box for you and you didn't have any choice in what was in it other than what we provided for you. We since then changed that idea up to give you, the gifter, the power of choice. So what you see up here, what you're touching right now and passing around is some of what we offer. And uh, the offerings are basically, is the sky's the limit when it comes to that. We feel like the power of choice when it comes to gift giving is probably one of the most powerful things that we can offer to you. So, for example, we have a client right now that we're building a box for and he gave us a budget that's um, in the five digit range. So we're sourcing some handmade cutlery from him that has mastodon ivory in the handles. Um, they're absolutely incredible. We are getting some connections with some vineyards here in Missouri, but also in California to try to find a wine that will meet the standard of the person who he's gifting to. So we can work with this. We have even more than what we offer here. We have some coffee some incredible candies as well. However, depending on the level of gift that you're looking at giving, you can source from all over the country. Um, the important part to us though is that we can also tell the story of the artisan and we can um, help you become an incredible <coughs> giver. Uh, so, 
that is a little bit about Union 183, and I would be happy to answer any questions that may pop up. Well, real quick, what are some of the challenges that you had or have in the, the you know, just keep this going? Running two businesses and having a family. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my biggest challenge right now is finding a salesperson. Um, for a little while, like I can, I can sell a little bit through conversation, through things like uh, BNI, general networking, but I need someone that can dedicate more time to be able to come in and have conversations with people and talk to them about our artisans that we represent. So that's probably one of the biggest issues that we have at this point is finding a really good salesperson. Please use the mic, that's where we're for <laughs> Hey, Joe, good presentation. Hey, um, thanks. You're welcome. Um, I've seen your stuff about Union 183, so it's really intriguing. Um, <clears throat> I know you're, you're looking for a person on the ground, but have you considered doing a full-blown like digital marketing campaign um, with video curation, talking about the story of the artisans, um, educating people? Um, it's a buying process, it's a nurture campaign, essentially, but, um, I don't know if that's something that you're interested in, but post-COVID, a lot of people have moved towards authenticity mm -hmm. and they're wanting to see real authenticity as far as products and people. And so I know with a lot of our clients that has really worked for them, so. That's something we've considered and that's still in the works. My, my business partner is a videographer. So it's something, uh, at least on the video side, that we, we have taken care of, but as far as building a web page. We're awful, we're both awful at it. And that's something we do need help with, is being able to create a platform that can team with the quality of what we have to offer, not the quality that I have to offer when I build a website. That's what we're gonna ask about as a website. Do you have one currently? We do, okay. union183.net okay. is where it's at. How is my feedback? Like I, thought, I went on the website and I thought it was very hot. Like it wasn't great, it didn't mm -hmm. really showcase like what you were offering, so yeah. I thought it was really exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Does, it, does it have a store on it where you can actually pick the box and pick the items and all that kind of thing? Or? That's a great question. So we don't have a store right now, okay. and my original decision to do that was very purposeful in the sense that I feel like to touch and feel these things, it's a very tactile uh, experience. And so as we were getting started, I wasn't am not still looking for volume over quality. So I would, to, to ramble on a little bit more about this, I would uh, have a presentation meeting with someone, say at 609, I'd bring a box in, all of our things, and set it there, and have five or six other people come up to me unrelated and say, what is this, tell me more about it, I wanna buy one. And so up until this point, I felt like because I just don't have the time. Having a face-to-face -face sit down with someone where they can touch these things, they can <clears throat> sip the whiskey if they want to, Sean, drink the beer that we've offered in the past, write with the pens, creates a more holistic experience than just buying online. And that's one of the reasons that we're not going down the rabbit hole or the, the route of being uh, subscription-based either. We want this to be a very intentional connection to quality when it comes to gift giving. However, that is a direction that we will go. I was going to say, but if someone's in California, they're not going to come to Missouri to write it down, do they? Great presentation. Um, beautiful boxes. Uh, I am just curious, sort of, you were talking about, like, you know, one of the challenges is finding a salesperson that can spend the time. So for that salesperson, what clientele are you trying to, obviously these are these are high end, um, and so are you looking, um, you know, for that sort of high end personal, like, you know, for a family member or for a special occasion or an anniversary even, or are you also maybe looking for um, some of our you know, bigger business clients where they're bringing someone in and they give a gift and, um, when they're trying to, you know, seal a deal. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, where, and I'm sure um, possibly your clientele has obviously evolved to um, since the beginning. Sure, that's a great question. Uh, our clientele from the beginning has been, wait, that was on, there we go. Okay, our clientele from the beginning has, has been higher end, 
Uh, we felt like people who are recruiting to bring in for higher end businesses, this can be a great tool for them to use. So looking for recruiters specifically, because we feel like these boxes really tell a great story about the hardworking people that are in Joplin, the quality of handmade goods that are in this area, in this region. Um, but very specifically, when we're looking at CEO level gift giving, whether you have someone that's getting a promotion, whether you have somebody that has made an incredible sale that's gonna take that business to the next level, the salesman can be gifted or that salesman can gift the new client something as well. So that brings me back to something I didn't mention. We also have people that will engrave. So if you want a logo or a brand or something else engraved into a box, that's something we offer too. But yeah, CEO level high end. Uh, and to, with, to go into that a little bit more, the average cost of the whiskey box is about $550. Um, the beer box is gonna be about 375 average for five to six items within that box that we have here. So, uh, um, th does that answer your question yeah, as no, far as? Does. Just sort of what, yeah, how you, you know, who you're marketing to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so larger businesses, hospitals, manufacturing, um, well, those are two that are kind of on the top of my list, but yeah, yeah you get the idea. Anybody else have enough? Understanding that you cannot be everywhere to everyone on your if you're gonna do a video you could have potential clients or, or other people though hold the pen and say this feels so good I love writing with it because you know or whatever so that they're kind of giving a personalized testimony that it is something that Wow, when they put it in my hand, I couldn't believe it. It was, it, you know, and the way that it writes, that kind of thing. So that you can give that experience as virtually as best you can. Absolutely. I, think. I love that idea. Thank you. I have questions about like where you are with your company. Like how many boxes have you sold? Like that, that sort of thing. How many people are involved? Um, I also have like a little bit of feedback just about like, it seems like a very masculine box mm -hmm. um when i went online i was i wanted to see like a little more like feminine touch maybe like sure. some items that would be good for um you know not necessarily just women but just a little bit more femininity to it too so yeah um so you touched on masculine feminine i apologize what was the first thing that you brought up uh, how where your company is now like how many boxes have you sold gotcha. what, what's it look like day to day okay um honestly day to day it doesn't look like much because uh, of needing a salesperson to come in and do that uh, we've been <coughs> in business about a year and a half we've sold probably about 50 boxes we do have one in canada we do have one in germany um, and a number of them in town but also throughout america as well um, but we're still like not profitable at this point. Um, it's, uh, I think getting kind of dialed in on what, what good margins look like for us. And because part of our, our model was we want to make sure that the artisans are getting paid uh, a, a good and fair amount for what they're doing. We didn't want to be an Amazon or a Walmart that's driving prices down to them for volume. So the, the business model is a little bit different that way. And so we've we've kind of gone back and forth over masculine and feminine, where do we find that balance? And at this point, we've really found that the women that we've talked to really, really do on, on that level, uh, enjoy and appreciate what they have here if they were to gift or receive that thing. Um, but we also, you know, if something is custom or wants to, you know, somebody has an idea of what they want custom made, we can do that as well. We're looking for a vineyard um, and a winery that we can talk to about possibly a smaller bottle, like 325 milliliters of wine instead of a full on bottle. Um, so we're in the process of, of having that conversation and kind of broadening out to that. But as far as what we've encountered so far, it's been, we've had good feedback for it. But it's, it's not off our radar. 
Yeah, but I was thinking, you know, you know the line of candles, the lineage line of candles, like that has a very, you know, there are a lot of different scents. It's been very popular at like local boutiques too. Um, I even thought about like having your box featured at like some of the local boutiques, like having it like a ready-made take with you sort of package. That's something we've considered yeah. also. Um, I've, I've thought about having that over at uh, Pittsburgh at Miners and Monroe, uh, maybe at Lennon's, something like that. But at the same time, we feel like it's not necessarily completely on brand for what we're wanting to do. We want it to be extremely intentional and not feel like just a gift box you go pick up and take with you as much as it is. I'm setting down intentionally to pick these things out for the person that I'm gifting to. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we won't go in that direction in the future. Um, but it is something we've we've kicked around that idea and tried to, I don't know, we want it a little bit more out of touch, sure. like you have to be very intentional to engage. Sure. I think it's a cool idea, which is why I have so many questions and I'm excited Honestly, about it. I appreciate it, the questions <laughs> yeah. 100%. Drew, uh, great presentation, and I love this because it's just an extension of your already being a creative mind. But um, I love what you're doing to make it unique. We're in such a mass duplication world, which is one of the successes in business, of course, but all of us have somebody in our life that is a difficult person to buy a gift for, right? Mm -hmm. This fixes that. And it also allows the individual to have a personal touch to it that even though you and your team are putting this together, they feel like they've got literally a hand in it. Absolutely. So of all of this, any times that I've either given or received a very custom gift, it's a very emotional moment. And it's something that stands the test of time. So have you thought about how you can capture that? Or not just the testimonials, because I could see this growing to a point where after you capture some of those testimonials, and you have a system in place, your referral network, you won't need a salesperson because the emotion of what this has done between people and bonding relationships and that kind of thing will just drive your business. Right. Um, so we've, we've really considered that and that's part of the reason we like to have in-person connections when we do make those sales or those presentations because it is a, a really interesting experience to sit down and open one of these things and wonder what's inside of it. And we've gone so far as to think about um, doing something almost like reality TV with it, where somebody knows that they're gonna be receiving something, but they don't know what it is. And so as much as we can stage that scene, you know, commit it to video, maybe some pictures or something, but have it still be extremely genuine mm -hmm. is something that we've considered. Um, and how far down the line do we go with that? Because Reality TV, I feel like, is so mass produced, you almost can't take it too seriously. And so we don't want to tip over the edge into that. But yes, capturing the the genuine surprise, the genuine gratitude of receiving something like this is it's something we're kind of trying to strategize over. I think that's nail on the head right there with uh, a longer term vision and being able to have it perpetuate itself through. Uh, the, the responses, the emotional responses, the gratitude that goes along with it. Thank you for seeing me. I appreciate it. Um, two things. One, have you talked to Kel Toy Winery? Um, I have, but not about this specifically. Uh, the big thing would just be if they're, if we can keep a price uh, in check while sourcing completely new bottles and things of that nature. He does really nice stuff up there, but anyway. Okay, the second question was, you're talking about having a salesperson and all that, but I was just kind of thinking, what if you found some very high-end stores mm -hmm. in some very strategically located places like Dallas, Kansas City, Tulsa, different places, and had very exclusive dealers there that could, quote, be your salespeople, and then you could set up a really cool display with several boxes items, whatever, and that they could either use, you know, pick from the stuff there, or again, they can custom make it. So I'm just kind of thinking like a dealership with a, mm -hmm. you know, a car, you've got samples, but then you can custom make, you know, what you want. So, but anyway, that way, because you can't be everywhere. And if you're not going to do it online, well, then if you had some very exclusive 
uh, dealers across the country, you can cover a bigger area and still have that same experience. I really do love that idea. That's not something I've considered up to this point. <laughs> so I appreciate that. My, my next question would be then, who do I chat with about making those connections? Um, we do have a lot of connections with artisans, other small business owners and things of that nature between my business partner and myself. However, we don't have those kind of connections that you're talking about. But I do, I do really like that idea a lot. Yeah. I think that's something that would go in line with what our brand is and yeah. the experience experience portion of it. Right. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Anybody else have a question? Comment? Suggestion? Okay.